privilege of being a teacher, a science teacher at the high school and the advisor of the Science Honor Society. So um, I appreciate you coming this evening and we will begin our program. I'll share my screen so that you can see a slideshow that was pre uh, prepared by our, our historian, Rory McNamara, the series of photographs from our events this past year. Please join as I recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. First, I'd like to thank the Board of Education for supporting all our programs. Dr. Raymond Cucciello, Interim Superintendent of Schools, Ms. Trova, Honor Society Advisor, and most importantly, parents and guardians. Your emphasis on education is what make events such as this possible. Students, 2020 has been a tumultuous year. Society was brought to complete standstill, schools were shut down, and protests spread across the globe asking for change. As you take the pledge to become part of the Science Honor Society, I also ask that you take the following pledges. I ask that you take a pledge to create a better society. I ask that you take a pledge to ensure that those that come after you have the same or better opportunities that you were given. And I ask that you take a pledge to take advantage of the academic opportunities that lay in front of you. Your education coupled with hard work will assist you in achieving your goals. You are the future. Your actions accomplishments will determine how we progress as a society. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is the point at which we would typically have a guest speaker. However, just because of all the circumstances that have been around, I am the guest speaker. So I thought I'd start off with something I get asked a lot. When people find out I'm not local, they say, how did you get here? So I started my college education at Grove City College in Western Pennsylvania as a music major as a pianist and an organist. My sophomore year though, I took a mandatory science class and I realized I needed to change my major. There are a lot of scientists and mathematicians who are very good musicians, but I don't know any musicians who are also scientists. So I became a chemistry major with really no idea of what that would mean for my career or where I could work or what a job as a chemist would entail. I just knew I liked chemistry. 
During college, I held a summer job at an oil refinery creating standard operating procedures, SOPs, for the lab processes there, including things like testing the pH of environmental water samples and testing the density and specific gravity of the oils. To create these SOPs, I shadowed lab techs successively through their days, writing down all the steps and the materials they used and making a numbered step-by-step -step procedure, writing it up and then following the tech again as they followed my procedure and I edited it as needed. It was really good training for eventually writing lab reports and creating lab procedures for my students. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree and went on to Ohio State for graduate school. I was part of a research group for an inorganic chemist, Professor Daryl H. Bush. And while there, I was involved in a project that included the synthesis and characterization of heteronuclear transition metal complexes. In addition to the standard glassware and procedures I'd learned as an undergraduate, I got to use a glove box and some pretty high-tech redox equipment. And I worked with some top-notch chemists, including Dr. Bush, who went on to become the president of the American Chemical Society. I graduated with a Master of Science degree, and then I worked in a pharmaceutical company using high-performance liquid chromatography and gas chromatography to create procedures used to test the stability of pharmaceutical preparations. I did not work in research or in designing or creating new substances to be tested for pharmacological activity. I worked with pharmaceuticals that had already been developed and determined to be active, safe, and effective and had formulations specified, but were in the process of being tested for long-term storage. Pharmaceuticals are tested in the package for sale and distribu distribution under the conditions of room temperature, high heat, high humidity, high heat and high humidity, freeze-thaw, all at intervals of 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48, and 60 months from the package date in order to determine their shelf life and their storage conditions. That's what I did. I developed procedures for those tests. After relocating, I ended up tutoring privately and substitute teaching until I went back to college, Empire State College this time, and earned a Master of Arts in Teaching, got certified to teach chemistry in the state of New York, and here I am. So why did I bother telling you this? In my career, I have had four distinctly different jobs in science. There are so many opportunities for a career in science that I didn't know about and more that I'm learning about all the time, that opportunities are really endless. What I do know is there is a great need for scientists and engineers and people who can think scientifically and plan and execute processes. And I know that we are not graduating and producing enough of those students in this country. There are a lot of people that claim that science is too hard or too boring. And I know when people find out that I teach, they always ask me, what do you teach? And I say, when I say chemistry, they almost always answer with things like, I hated science, or I almost failed that class, or I did fail that class, or I could never be in science, I'm a people person, or how do you work with this all the time? Well, scientists have to do it all. They have to be a people person too, because scientists interact with other scientists, customers, and sales reps all the time. Scientists have to be good oral and written communicators so that they can plan experiments and clearly discuss results with colleagues, so that they can attend conferences and present work and write reports and interact with their customers and supervisors. Scientists have to be good mathematicians, and that doesn't mean that they have to be able to use a calculator. They need to have a good number sense. Remember Mental Math Mondays, anyone? And they have to really understand the math. It's not just to be able to use a formula and plug in numbers. They have to be able to use and apply the math. Scientists need to be logical thinkers and problem solvers. They have to be able to see the big picture as well as the minutia, and they have to be able to collect and organize data. They have to be able to evaluate their data objectively, and they even need to be able to operate in what is essentially a CER format. That is not going away, guys. 
So scientists have to do it all. So maybe it is hard. But scientists also have job security and a lot of opportunity for growth, development, and continued learning. And currently, as we're all sitting at home, watching on our computers, something we've always done in person, we should all be very aware of how important science is and how dependent we are on science and scientists and engineers. We need scientists and engineers to understand how the body functions so that we can identify disease and treat people who are ill. We need scientists and engineers to understand how disease spreads so that we can contain disease and not contaminate others. We need scientists and engineers to understand what a virus is. We need scientists and engineers to understand the role of viruses in our world. How do they replicate? How do they cause disease? How can they be destroyed without destroying the host? We need scientists and engineers to understand what a vaccine is and how to create one that is safe and effective. We need scientists and engineers to understand how to test a proposed pharmaceutical preparation in a matter that is responsible and produces reliable results that can be analyzed objectively. We need scientists and engineers to understand how to synthesize a pharmaceutical preparation that takes an active ingredient and puts it into a form and a formulation that can be administered safely to patients. We need scientists and engineers to understand how to take a lab bench procedure and upscale it to make millions or even billions of doses. We need scientists and engineers to understand how to design and build instruments to aid technicians so that tests on samples can be made accurately and reliably. We need scientists and engineers to understand how to design and build machines that take a simple lab process using a beaker and a test tube and make it work in containers that are as big as the room you're sitting in right now. We need scientists and engineers to understand how to design the processes so that those upscaled procedures do not lead to contamination or degradation of the ingredients. We need scientists and engineers to understand how to determine stability of the pharmaceutical preparation so that the pharmaceutical is stored and packaged so that the product, when it reaches the patient, is as pure and safe as it was when it was produced. I, I could go on and on. I could go on and show the role of how important it is to know and understand science in this time of this COVID pandemic. And I could certainly extend that list to then go on to things like food supplies, fertilizers, paints, flavors, fragrances, dyes, technology, computers, your cell phone. The list is endless. Literally everything you have and use has its roots in science and technology. A scientist and engineer had their hand in every consumer good made. So the members of this honor society have stated their intention to be involved in science, engineering, and technology in some way. Their application for membership includes an essay that reflects on their individual goals and plans with respect to science, technology, engineering, and math. The graduating seniors are going to a variety of colleges with many different majors declared. Where will those degrees take them? It's hard to tell because there are so many opportunities and directions to go. So to all of you members, thank you. Thank you for being interested in science and for being willing to take the hard classes. And I should point out that the top five students in the class are members of the Science Honor Society. And thank you for being willing to work hard to understand the world around you and to use that knowledge to improve our lives and our society. So we will now move to our um, induction ceremony. So um, this will be led by our officers and I have to just switch screens here for a second. So give me a minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, now move to the induction of the ceremony. 
The induction of new members into the New York State Science and Care Society is important to the students, the chapter, and the school. In the ceremony, we celebrate character, scholarship, leadership, and service. Membership in the chapter of New York State Science Honor Society has been earned by the effective demonstration of these qualities. Students who are joining the Science Honor Society this evening are Nicholas Osfelmeyer, Syed Hussein, Alexander Klein, Carter Martin, Brenna McNamara, Gabriella Moroto, and Lauren Mowry. The first candle symbolizes character. Character is a set of attributes possessed by an individual which distinguishes that person from others, giving each person individuality and personality. Character is necessary for the development of self-respect and for the respect of others. It is the character of a person that guides one through life and when developed, grows steadily. Character is achieved and not received. It is a product of striving daily to make the right choice, to achieve in reality what we wish to be. By demonstrating qualities such as honesty, reliability, and sincerity, we hope to prove by example that we value character. The second candle symbolizes scholarship. Scholarship is a commitment to learning. It is a willingness to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn, to apply the principles of scientific exploration throughout our lives, because knowledge is the key to building on the past in order to illuminate the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their horizons through the application of fine scholarship. The third candle represents leadership. Leadership is the ability to take the initiative in order to influence others and to help achieve an objective. It means having the confidence to begin while others hesitate. The true leader should exert a positive force, training colleagues to strive towards a worthy goal and praising their efforts. Often, this involves personal sacrifice, a willingness to yield personal interests in order to accomplish the goal. Yet, a wise leader is necessary the effective guidance of resources. It is a quality which is always respected and one which our candidates should continue to demonstrate. The fourth candle represents service. Service is a willingness to work without compensation or recognition for the benefit of those in need. During the course of each day, numerous opportunities, opportunities arise to help others. It is our charge to candidates that they commit them to continue service by volunteering their time and their abilities to the assistance of their fellow students and the improvement of society. The central candle represents the eternal light of scientific knowledge. This knowledge helps us to achieve our highest aspirations. It is the quest for this knowledge that inspires us to question, observe, explore, and create. New members. Please raise your right hand and join me in the Science Honor Society Pledge that is in your program. I pledge myself to uphold the principles of the Science Honor Society to which I have been selected. I strive to make its ideals the ideals of my country, my school, and my life. Congratulations on your membership to the Amsterdam High School chapter of New York State Science Honor Society. At this time, I would like to just acknowledge our graduating seniors. Um, again, you have this uh, on the back page of your um, program. Um, 
this is hard because I've, I've got these kids for mostly three years and they're good kids. So um, if I could, when I read your name, just sort of wave at the camera so anyone who uh, is out there watching, if they don't know you, they can see you. Peyton Osfield will be going to Assumption College. Annika Sislow to Lemoyne. Grace Clark to Fulton Montgomery Community College. Kai Desbians to Siena College. Rain Desbians to Syracuse University. Philip Hans to the University of Buffalo. Catherine Hemsley to Paul Smith College. Asia Hussein to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Brianna Jones to SUNY Delhi. Tyler Krakow to Stony Brook. Noah Mascaro to Binghamton University. Rory McNamara to the Rochester Institute of Technology. Matthew Murphy to Villanova University. Michael Rokas to Penn State. And Andrew Van Epps to the University of Buffalo. Congratulations to all of you. It's been a pleasure working with you. This <laughs> This concludes our program. So I, again, I want to say thank you to all of the students and good luck 